She's twisted my arm. She did want to do this. And I sat through it and I've hate watched it. There's a spoiler. I did not like this, but let's talk about why. You, however, witchy McWitch face, look at you in your background. You seem to have had a blast with this. Talk to me. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Um, anything witchy and mystical and all of that, I'm up for straight away. Uh, but I'm not without criticism for it. Um, obviously, there's things that did happen that we can't deny that we were just saying then, you know, the, there are things that are facts. I'm more in the camp of seeing how it unfolds, although I'm not over overawed with the first couple of episodes. But I love Agatha as a character and I, I want to see where they take it. But you can start with with your feelings on the matter. Look, I think Agatha as a character in a one division capacity was a useful tool for the overarching narrative of Wanda Maximoff and Vision. I think Agatha as a standalone character, aside from present company, I'm genuinely struggling to wrap my, my head around who is this character for? <laughs> like, mm. Because she's not properly witchy. Like she's kind of almost like modern witchy. It's like witch with mm. a suit. I'm like, you, you haven't gone full goth witch on me here. So I think that I, coat, I, though. Any coat, coat that no. works like a tape. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm the coat it. is the coat is on point. I'll give you that. <laughs> but listen, I, I've said this in our Lord of the Rings stuff, which is why I continue to be an apologist for the Rings of Power. And I said this repeatedly when we were doing House of the Dragon together. It's not big spectacle. It's not power dynamics. It's it's not flashy moments that make a show good. It's all what it always for me comes down to two things, story and character. And I Substance. think this that's what gives the show substance yeah is mm. the story that i'm being taken on interesting and logical and are the characters taking me along this narrative characters that are interesting more than one dimensional have got interesting dynamics between themselves have got into inter good interpersonal relationships that some of which i can kind of project myself onto because that's always a really key point isn't it you've got to mm -hmm. Good and bad, you've got to sometimes see some extension of yourself in some characters, which is why you tend to like some characters more than others. Sometimes subconsciously, for the people out there who said I like Thanos, I judge you. Um, but you know, it's it's um He it, wasn't wrong though, was he? That well, that was that was the brilliant thing about <laughs> him. There was there was method to his madness. Um the although it would have been better if you could have like cherry picked. Rather than just, you know, just an overview. It's like, do we agree that there should be less people and we're bulldozing our planet? Yes. Do those people deserve to die? No, 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 no. No judge, jury. Be removed, though. Sure. Removed. Can we put Different. them all on an, all the bad people on an island? Can we do that instead? Who judges who's bad? Because <laughs> Animal this is abusers, like... murderers, like, you know, all of okay. these type of people. Extreme bad, yes, I'd agree with. But it, you've actually <laughs> completely unintentionally led to a really interesting point here about the opening of the show. Because ultimately, in our own worlds, as people, we're always our own hero, right? But in someone else's world, we are the villain. And we may, mm. sometimes we're not even aware of it. Like, there are so many people in life who have pissed me off and who probably aren't even aware of it, but they've left a lasting impression like that person is a knob, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that the same goes the other way. In fact, it, it's guaranteed that it does. Jesus, look at the comment section on Rings of Power. Most of the internet thinks I'm a knob at the moment for liking this show, um, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but look, the crux of it, which you brought up off camera before, which was the detective stuff at the beginning. I actually thought that was the one cool trick they had because the show is called Agatha. Right off the bat, she's called Agnes. That opening mm. credit scene quoted her character name as one of the actors. Did you pick that up? Yeah, like, I did. Uh, well, I didn't, was, I, I didn't register that it was actually her name yeah. until you've just said it. Like, obviously, I thought, oh, there's an Agnes in the film, no, no, in the, in the program her. as well. It's her. I didn't so, recognize that. That's what was really interesting about it. And then it said at the end, based on the Danish series WandaVision. And I was like, okay, mm. you've kind of gone a bit true detective here. And for a moment, mm -hmm, yeah. I was like, I was like, you know what? A witch show in the vein of true detective, I might actually be on board for. Mm-hmm. 
Then I realized very quickly that that's not we're going to get what we're going to get because Catherine Hahn, who is a very fine actress, was completely overacting her detective part. It's like, where were you last night? And I'm like, yeah, but this isn't because she's a bad actress. So there's a reasoning for this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you find out very quickly that the reasoning for this is because, well, she's trapped in one dispel still, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as Aubrey Plaza's character says, love Aubrey Plaza, as Aubrey Plaza's character says, Oh, this is how you see yourself, huh? This is like the world according to you. So coming back, bringing it full circle, in this world, she is her own hero, even though she was the mm -hmm. villain previously. So it relates to what you were just mm -hmm. saying. But that, I thought, was the one interesting trick they had. And they really blew their load in the first 20 minutes. It was like a young man coming in for a quickie. I'm like, why? Why did you tear the walls down? Quote Chris Jericho. Why did you break the walls down so quickly? You could have extended this true detective thing for half the season yeah. and, and kept audiences wondering, WTF is going on here? Because at least that is an interesting... I don't understand how Witchy is now a detective. And if they don't mm -hmm. answer, that is a good enough driver, for me at least, I'm speaking purely personally, mm -hmm. that's a good enough driver to bring me back each week to go, how is she a detective now? How have we gone from that to this? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And in 20 minutes, they've taken that away and they've made it the, bare bones. There's a disconnect. The, there's a oh. disconnect. And I think they built it up really well. And we, we were saying the same thing, you know, like the true detective, the CSIs, the criminal minds, they've, they've used it and tapped into the world's fascination with true crime and the um, translation of that onto TV shows and the popularity of those TV shows. And I see what they've done there 100 percent. But they've not. They, they didn't extend it long enough to make people oh. care enough. So it's it, it was a little confusing in the sense of the opening titles, her humming that the tune on the way there and all of that, that kind of mystery around it. They built that up like it was going to be more of a thing, like the, the, the crime stuff and her being a detective stuff was going to be more of a thing. Like you said, the overacting and stuff straight away, like initially I was like, mm, it's a bit odd, but like you said, it became very apparent that she was overacting that because she was almost like acting in her own little world. Yeah. But they needed, we needed more of that for it to make sense. I think, I think well, you had to really look into it. Like we analyze stuff mm -hmm. for it to become really obvious and mm -hmm. to the casual watcher, it's not, it's not as obvious. I don't think. It, it's well, maybe to the casual watcher, it's not as obvious. O of, obviously I'm not going to analyze this through the lens of the casual watcher. I'm going to analyze this through my eye. And mm. I thought they did something really interesting with that first 20 minutes. And I was like, you've created just by making this a weird quasi true detective show, which is not mm. what the show was marketing itself as off that basis alone. You've given me enough now to tune in next week. If this is what you're going to do for the entire episode. But no, no, we don't get nice things. No, we're going to. God, it was so lame. I'm sorry. Her going into it just the... ha it happened too quickly. It just happened too quickly. Like it just Way needed to be. It, it, it's been crammed into two episodes. I get it. If they were going to drop two episodes straight away, they want to invest. But I just. But make yeah, the two episodes I... two detective episodes then. Yeah, Make the first two yeah. episodes two detective episodes. Then you've still got at the, Have end of the conversion. Two, like where, where she had that audience. thing. Yeah, you've got the where, where she came out of herself. Back. That should have been at the end of the second episode for sure. Not like even, the whole witch is road thing. Even, I like, not, but too no, soon. F that too soon. <laughs> if this is an eight episode season, stretch this detective stuff into episode four. Keep me, keep the internet talking. It would probably, it would probably have lost me personally. I, I, I want more witchy stuff. Like it's, but if they'd have, if it was detective stuff and it was, she was gradually coming out of herself, so she was showing signs of it, and it was, it was integrated a little bit more. Then yeah, it would have kept my attention. I thought the detective stuff was cool, but I'm here for the witchy stuff. So don't, don't get me wrong. I'm sort of here for the witchy stuff. This is hindsight because I don't think the witchy stuff we got was that good. Um, I obviously we'll showed, <laughs> well, I, I showed up to the show for the witchy stuff. And it was the fact that that's not what I got that intrigued me. 
And I was yeah, like, yeah. on, on that basis of intrigue and got my attention, you would have me coming back next week. Now, fast mm. forwarding, where the show ended, I'm only coming back next week because we've made a commitment to review this show. That's it. There is no reason for me to tune in next week. I can literally tell you right now how this show ends without having seen it. It's, it's Let, so don't, don't obvious. <laughs> I won't. But it's so freaking obvious. You don't need to be a diehard Marvel. to. It's just, it, have you seen a movie before? Oh, look, it's so tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> We're going on the path. Well, that's not a metaphor for the path towards the end, is it? Oh, it's like, oh, God. How Let's on the see. nose do you want to be with this? Um, again, see. this is all judging off of episode one and two. They might pull a massive swerve on me, and this can all change. This is my case. this is my feel at the minute. I feel like because they've crammed so much into the first two episodes, which I'm not a massive fan of, but it's giving me another desire to watch it to see where they go with it. Because if they're cramming all of that into two episodes, there must be a hell of a lot that they're going to do in the in the in the next six. So I'm having a bit of faith. So said every viewer I'm of Loki. Not... <laughs> yeah yeah I'll I'll, uh, I'll give you that one I'm more interested in this by this point though than I was in Loki at this point but that I think that's personal taste yeah uh, personal I think that comes like yeah that. that's a personal tasting which is fine nothing wrong with that but so episode one I, I'm going to kind of sum up episode one and two here just talk about what the crux of them were and feel free to disagree after I'm done but it's like episode one true detective mode comes out of true detective mode because she sees a body with red hair oh scarlet witch oh how did she die ah it doesn't matter she's dead which means the spell's broken i'm going to take off some coats i'm a witch again it's like <laughs> that happened i was like that's terrible she went um, via the tony storm stage and then came oh out of my, <laughs> oh my god. yeah literally that i was like oh my god and then it's revealed that this woman who is kind of antagonizing her Aubrey Plaza is her opposing witch. Black which is very witch. obvious, like straight away, as soon as she walks no in the room. No doy. Like, <laughs> come on. And then, why does this witch hate Agatha? Don't know. Doesn't matter. Just go with it. So they, yeah. have, a so they have a big fight, and she can basically lay her out. This woman who pulled her out of a spell in order to kill her now has the opportunity to kill her. And the line that stops her killing her is, yeah, but come on, you only you don't really want to kill me now. You want to kill me when I'm strong and at my full power. Now, forgive me, if you're going to... I say this like a seasoned murderer. I'm not. But if you're going, <laughs> if you're going to kill someone and you've been pushed that far down the rabbit hole of murder... Trust me, you're not going to worry about... It's not a Dragon Ball Z thing where it's like, a power level is 9,000. It's like, what is this? Like, So many productions have made that mistake, though. Like, yes. it's, uh, with, with their, uh, like, James Bond is a massive example of that. You know, like, uh, you know, obviously Austin Powers takes a mick out of that massively. It's a case of, hi, Mr. Bond, I've been trying to kill you for 20 years. I'm going to sit you in a seat and I'm going to turn my back on you and then you're going to get out of your handcuffs and then you're going to kill me. Do you know what I mean? It, it's that yep. kind of obvious like yep. why type situation <laughs> yep at least bond gets away with it because bond used to be cool now i don't know what bond is anymore but look the what, what they did with this the way the episode ended with her going cool i'll get a coven of witches together to become powerful again okay i like that but again it's just happened too soon i think there could have been more about the journey of going to find them and them changing their minds. I think that there was more in that, but again, that's just been packed in. And I just, I just have a feeling that there's a reason why everything's been packed in because there's just, there's going to be so much to tell. And I'm happy to hold my hands up at the end of this series and go, I was wrong, but I'm just, it must be, it must be like, why else would you just pack everything into two episodes? Mm. I can't find any other logical reason for it. Like there, yeah, there must, you know, just must be so much going on. They're going to rush this show. I tell you. Uh, oh, I, hope you, you, I hope not. Nah, they're going to rush the show. You can tell by the way this is written and designed that this is going to be rushed. There's no big thing coming, I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, I have to remain hopeful. Have to remain hopeful. I, I, I'll, I'll happily be surprised then. Is what I, <laughs> that's what I'll answer. And then we get on to episode two. 
Armed with Marvel has found its Jar Jar Binks. Do we call him Jar Jar the Gay or Gay? I gay love gay? Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks is my favorite Star Wars character of all time. He gets a you bad rap because Star Wars fans are too just... precious. Oh, yes. mate. I love him. I love an underdog. I think he's hilarious. And I think Star Wars fans are stupid. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, I don't think they're stupid, really. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But I just, I do think it's a gatekeeping precious thing over Jar Jar. Okay, leave Jar Jar. Hilarious. This side character <laughs> sucks. Do you think? This is one of He's... the most annoying. This is the Scrappy Doo of Agatha. All right. I this love Scrappy Doo one... as well. Oh, stop it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You always reference the Scooby Doo type stuff. You underestimate the power and the enjoyment of Scooby Doo. Oh, like... <laughs> I love Scooby Doo. I love Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. I not love Scrappy. Bad. No, Scrappy's a twat. Um... He, can... <laughs> he, can, he can get a bit much, but I do. I think he's hilarious. I, just, I love this those types of characters. This little kind of familiar character she's armed herself with is so annoying. He is so annoying. It's like eyebrows the gay. That's literally what we're <laughs> going to have to call him. Like, how much do you want to bash me over the head that this character's gay? Did you know he's gay? Oh, look, he's got a boyfriend. Oh, look at his vocal intonations. He's gay. He's gay. He's gay. It's like, I get it. Why do you care okay, so much? Yeah. I, I, it's I, like, can I give you, you that. Cool like, and now here's yeah, what have... I, I need to defend myself preemptively here because I know now people are going to come at me and be like, what, you got a problem with the gay character? I'm like, no, bring on no. the gay character. Don't make such a big deal about him being gay. Like, mm. make mm. him gay by all means. Have like they did. It feels um, that element of it feels like Joe a box and tick. Oh my God. What they did with mm. Joe and Anthony Russo in Endgame when they were having that therapy session with Chris Evans. And mm. in that guy, the guys talk about how he lost his boyfriend, right? In in the in the snap, beautiful, underplayed, didn't make a big deal out of it. It normal, wasn't just normal, just life. normal yeah, character. Yeah. It's mm. like you don't need to make such a big deal about what gender the person you sleep with is. Mm. It's like mm. by all, the scene where it said his boyfriend is calling. That's all you needed. That, yeah. Perfect. It's like, cool, we know this character's gay. That will, to some degree, form the way he sees the world. That's fine. But, oh, mm. my God, the freaking rampage of LGBTQIA battydom I got. It's like, how much do you want to bash me over the head that this character's gay? I get it. It's not that important because he's not that an important character. Move on. Please I think he will be. On. No. I think he will be. But I don't think um, the fact that he is gay is going to be relevant to that importance. But like you say, it, it doesn't, uh, it, it feels like a box tick because they so over egged it so much, which is a shame because you don't have to do that. Like you can no. make it a That's thing make without him gay. Have a gay character yeah. and don't make him a freaking pastiche. Like, mm. he is literally a homosexual pastiche at this point. And look, people are going to be like, oh, it says the straight, the cisgender white man. It's like, not the point, guys. The point is, is that cast gay characters, have gay characters. Yeah. Integrate don't, it. Don't, don't like... Don't make such a yeah. big deal about them being gay. Having mm. them just mm. be gay without making a big deal out of it is what normalizes having gay characters. You're not going to yeah. make a big deal about Agatha Strait, Agatha Strait, Agatha Strait. Look, it's her mm. boyfriend calling her. Like, cool it. Just mm. slow your roll. Have him gay. Yeah. Show that his boyfriend's calling. Leave it at that. Don't make such Integrate a big deal. Yeah. Mm. Don't make such a big goddamn deal about the character being mm. gay because when you do that all it does is it drives attention on the fact that he's gay which takes away from the storyline and you're wondering mm. well why are they making such a big deal about his well, are they doing it for a reason like no. I'm, I'm not saying yeah but no. like this is the disney them... machine in full swing this is the disney machine mm. doing what the disney machine mm. does i'm afraid and they do it with every show and some shows and some movies they do it well like what they did making Le Fuge in Beauty and the Beast, which was just a throwaway thing at the end. You know, mm. he's dancing with a woman. Oh, then he's dancing with a man to affirm what we've always theorized is Le Fou's gay. What they did yeah. in Endgame, having Anthony Russo or Joe Russo sitting around talking about how he lost his boyfriend. Beautifully done. Come. Mm. The gay lesbian witches from the Acolyte, bad. Eyebrows, eyebrows McGee, bad. Like... This isn't how you write. This is tokenism. This isn't mm. how you write convincing, mm. diverse characters. It, it, no, it, it, 
and it just made me go, why? What? This is a show about a female. Why? And her coven of witches. It's awesome that she's got a little, you know, gender fluid character along for the ride with her. Just don't make such a big goddamn deal about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, be certainly. cool, man. And then the whole of episode two just goes along with the whole, oh, I've got progressively more and more bad witches. I don't know what you'd call them. It was cringe for me, the whole thing. And it culminated with a scene that you love, which objectively I didn't mind until I remembered the power of one, the power of two, the power of many from the Acolyte. And I was like, well, I can never hear a witch singing again. Thank you for that. Um, Ignore the take the acolyte out of it, right? Like, so you can't, it's too fresh, it's too fresh. (laughs) So, for me, being a witchy person, like my background is charmed, and you know, all the likes of of those types of programs, and as a singer and a musician, yeah, Sabrina, and like. And yeah, I, lo- I love the new Sabrina as well. I think you know the way that's been translated was fantastic. Well, that's we're, we're past that now, unfortunately. Um, but as a singer and a musician, like I can see your point of view, like not coming from that perspective, like especially with on the back of the acolyte, where you're just like, oh my god, this is so cringe. But as a singer, watching the arrangement of that incantation being done in song, as a witchy person, bringing all of those things together, I found it mesmerizing. Because being able to arrange a melody and you know the melody and lyricism in that way and turn it into an incantation was literally magical for me. I thought it was brilliant. Like I can see how other people could find that a bit cringe and a bit cheesy and all of that. But that was so many elements of my enjoyment and mm. what's in my world coming together at once. And the way it was filmed as well, the cinematography of it, I just thought it was brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. I don't disagree with you. This is the thing. Disney were their own worst enemies here. By This was a bad piece of marketing, having Agatha release so close to the Acolyte when you know, as the, as the, over, as the masters running Disney knew. So mm-hmm. we got two things that are kind of revolving around witches coming out in very close proximity to each other here. Someone in the room should have had the balls to stand up and go, what if the first one really isn't well received? Are we not mm. worried about negative cross pollination towards the second one? That's a risk, though. You've it's got a risk. to think about it's, these it's a risk. You are, you are, they probably did, but they're either going to go one way or the other. Like, and to, for me, they should have released this closer to Halloween. But at the same time, hundred percent, they were probably. You know, it, it's it's what do we do? Do we hope that the acolyte is good and we run off the back of that? Do we take the risk? Do we do this? There's always going to be those. Your decisions Halloween pitch is great. Be the right one. Your Halloween pitch is great. They should have dropped episode it should one have been over two Halloween. on but Halloween. The problem with that is, should, I think it should have built up to Halloween. I think Halloween should have been the final episode. No, because the risk you've got there is that if the audience tapers off, then you've lost the momentum. Whereas if you tap into the furor around Halloween with episode one and two, you'll get yeah. more people on board initially. Fair, but I think the reason why they've not gone for that, and you've seen this quite a lot with these kind of releases over the last couple of years, is Halloween is very competitive. So I'm yeah. guessing that's why they've done it now on the uh, like just before the real build up to Halloween. I mean, from September first, you know, it's Halloween in my house, but it's Christmas at the same time. I kind of get it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it is. We're bypassing Bonfire Night and um, and Halloween. Of course, yeah. um, it's been Christmas in some places since July. It's um, ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, I, I see the logic and the decisions that they've made, but they've taken a risk. And which, whatever decision you make is going to be a risk, whatever decision that is. So it's unfortunate about the acolyte. Yeah. But what do you do? You know, you go one way or the other, and it's either going to work or it's not. And you can't, I can't help in my head. We've got to wrap soon. I can't help in my head, but make those comparisons. You know, it's like mm. it, they're so close, even though they've got no, nothing to. to do with each other. They're just, they've been released in such a close time frame that I'm like, oh, Christ. My wife walked in because she wasn't interested really in this show. She walked in during that song. She's like, that's nice. And then went, oh, wait, the power of many. And I was like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, you're right. Um, See, now I've not seen The Acolyte. So, don't, and don't, I'm, from what you've said, I'm glad because with my love of witchy things, I, I probably have got very angry. Yes. <laughs> Do not. Um, has episode have episode one and two done enough? And, and and this MacGuffin they've put in of the path. Here's the last problem: we don't know what it is. We don't know 
why they're on it. We don't know why it's important. We don't know what the end game leads. All we've been told is she needs her coven of witches to get powerful again to sup, sap their power. She's got her coven of witches. The road. Yep, but she's got her coven of witches. Of she didn't manage to get their power. Now they're on this road. Like it wasn't a mm. natural progression from A to B to no. C to D. We needed it to really learn felt... more. Yep. We needed it to learn more completely... about it. Yeah. And it hasn't, it's failed. So when you don't give people the answers of what the thing they're on is, you need to create enough mystery for me to think well, where is this going? And they failed mm. to do that. So they've both failed to tell me what the path, the road, the thing is, and they've equally failed to tell me why I need to care about it, meaning mm. that it's just become a, well, I suppose I'll watch it then now that I'm into episode three. I agree with the not doing enough to care about it in the sense of not building it up enough and get really getting behind it at the same time for me personally i'm invested enough because i want to know where they're going with it i do feel like they have rushed the first two episodes and they've crammed a lot in but that like i said before it's given me enough of a feeling to go well there must be a reason as to why they've done this so i want to see where it goes but again there's a lot of personal interest behind that so loki for example there was some personal interest behind that but not in the same way that i have for this i still kept watching it mainly because danny wanted to watch it and because it's loki and again mm. it, there was a curiosity of seeing where it went it ultimately didn't deliver for me it had its moments that absolutely had its moments all the the multiple loki's and richard e grant and crocodile and or, or alligator loki and all that kind of thing brilliant but as an actual production from start to finish, it was a bit of a damp squib. I'm hoping that this doesn't turn out that way. I know we're not feeling massively like it won't. But yeah, I, I want to see where it goes. And I really, really hope it turns on its head. This for me felt, so that was your conclusion. This for me felt exactly what I was worried they would do, though the first 20 minutes did catch me off guard, which I commend it for. I wish they'd double down on that. It does feel like a typical you must be on, along for the ride because it says Marvel on the tin, therefore trust us. But of recent years, Marvel have not done enough to earn my trust back after phase four. And yeah, I'll, I'll go along for it for the purpose of the channel, for the purpose of that this is clearly going to be in the discussion for the coming weeks and I want to be part of the discussion. I'll remain quietly hopeful that the show could pull a swerve on me, but based off of recent Marvel dis straight to Disney Plus series, I'm not overly confident, but I'm hopeful. So those are our yeah. thoughts on Agatha. Um, we will be here next week for episode three review. Um, it's just going to be... Whether he likes this... it or not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just going to be me this week on the Lord of the Rings stuff. And we will be hopefully covering... Well, it'll either be me covering Penguin or both of us covering Penguin later today. It's game day, baby! Uh, but that's all from us for now. Thank you, as always, for joining us here on the Silver Screen Dudes. I'm... Nico, she's she, she, ha, she, ah, get it right. She's Lauren, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us, guys. Bye for now.